This is the brand new 6th gen iPad Pro with the M2 chip. And as you can see, it's also DaVinci Resolve. Just not the one you all actually wanted. I know everyone is eagerly awaiting any more news about the release of DaVinci Resolve for iPad. I definitely am. But while I do wait, I wanted to get as close as I could uh, to the full experience we will have when it does release. Michael Tobin just had a recent video where he does uh, what I'm doing here. Uh, he uses the iPad uh, with Sidecar to mirror his main display and then functionally uses that uh, as, as a screen as he edits. I wanted to test one specific thing. This guy. I love the idea I have in my head of taking your iPad and taking a speed editor, going anywhere and cruising through uh, your B-roll or even some narrative stuff, finding your best takes and cutting together a quick edit on the go without a keyboard or mouse to be seen. And while Blackmagic has said they do plan on beefing up the cut page since the edit page won't be coming to the iPad at all, let's see what we're dealing with as it is. The big hero here is really the source tape feature. On the cut page, when you have all your clips in your media pool, you can click the source tape button or right on the speed editor, you can click the source button and that will pull up all those clips in one long sequence. And then you can scrub through those, set in and out points, drop them right on your timeline. You never have to click back to the media bin or back to your next clip. And if all you're doing is watching back and finding those parts, you can even do this while previewing your footage in full screen. I'm by no means a cut page master, really. I've just dabbled I think it is really good for a few select workflows and with how uh, they plan to beef it up, um, I'm really excited for what the cut page could be. While I was waiting, I also went ahead and uh, downloaded one of the images that Blackmagic released in their press release about the app. And you can scale that to full size on the iPad and even just holding that in your hand it looks pretty good. Peripherals will be a big deal for a lot of these workflows, but I also think Blackmagic is going full steam ahead uh, with Resolve being fully usable just with a touch interface, which I think could be pretty great. You absolutely get the most out of the screen when you are just holding it in your hand. Uh, if you're just using it like a display, then some UI elements will start to be pretty small. And then that is a situation where you would want uh, the precision of something like a mouse. But when you're holding an iPad right in your hands, uh, you're pretty good to go. You should also really go without saying that uh, footage looks great on the iPad. I'm not upgrading from a previous iPad. Uh, this is the first iPad I've ever bought and it's nice. <laughs> and back to our experiment, when you do have that footage uh, cut down onto your timeline, then you have all the normal speed editor controls to move it around, add transitions. You can punch in, it has that really cool close up button where you can just scrub and it will zoom in and then you can uh, reposition, I believe only on the Y axis for now, I don't know. I don't believe there's any reason why the speed editor wouldn't uh, perfectly pair with Resolve on the iPad when it does come out, but it raises an interesting question, especially with all the new features they plan to add to the cut page, uh, will the speed editor as is be enough? Could software updates just unlock it even more? I know tons of people want custom key bindings on this, that would be amazing. Or could there even be something like a speed editor light? Maybe you could just give me a jog wheel, uh, in and out, insert button, uh, make it pretty cheap. Uh, maybe pair it with a uh, Resolve for iPad Studio license. I don't know. It's black magic. They'll do whatever they want. Odds are it's going to be pretty cool. If you are sitting around waiting for the release of this app like I am, and you have an existing iPad and a Mac that you can uh, run that sidecar process mirroring on, hey, give it a go, uh, especially if you have a speed editor. As you can see, uh, I don't even have an iPad stand, <laughs> but I couldn't get that image out of my head of how nice and clean it looks. Speed editor, iPad, and just imagine you add on cloud collaboration all on top of this. You could have someone on set ingesting footage, making proxies, and you could be anywhere on an iPad, open up a cloud project, get those proxies on your system. You've got a speed editor. You can be up, cutting, running in no time. That's all fun little experiment I ran. Um, I am definitely going to keep running this experiment. I'm going to do everything I can while I wait. I'm pretty excited. Are you excited? Do you currently have a speed editor? Um, and if you don't, uh, what do you think could change in the speed editor uh, that would really make it appeal uh, to this sort of new ecosystem of Resolve on the iPad? I'm really curious about what Blackmagic Design might do next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. That was my first unboxing. How'd I do?